Welcome back to the Late Night Gamer and the start of the playthrough of Napoleon. So we've been to set up, we are going to initiate the battles and see if Napoleon can be as successful on the game board here as he was in reality in, uh, in Northern Italy. The game board comes with a box here that tells you about the sequence of play. It's nothing too complicated. We'll start with France, which is us. We will advance the turn counter. We will do our moves on the battle map. We will resolve any battles. We will move again, paying supplies, and resolve any battles. And then we do a resupply step. And the enemy will take their orders, resolve battles, and resupply. So it's fairly simple. Let's start. So the first thing we do is advancing the turn counter one step. And now we are in March 1796. I should point out that in order to win the game, we need to conquer all the objectives. Hmm, yeah. So if we can do that before the timer runs out, we will be successful. There is a defeat condition that is listed here in the setup box. And it says that unless I hold at least two objectives, from the end of March 1796, and that is actually the first game turn, I will lose. So before this turn is over, I need to control at least one more victory point um, area. So Turin is of course the the um, obvious choice. Yeah, it is. It's so close, and it's the only uh, area with a victory point in that I can reach in the first game turn. Milan is a possibility, but I have to go to Turin in any case. So, of course, I will be attacking Turin. Having moved the turn counter, I will determine my moves, and I can move one step only to the adjacent area. Mm -hmm. Of course, the fortifications and garrison do not move, so they will stay put. Well, I'm not going to move all my units, but I'm going to move some of my units. Speaking of units, let's just briefly have a closer look at them. So I laid out some units on the board here, and the first thing that we notice are the flag. And the flag tells us that these are French units. French units. This is um, an enemy unit from Piedmont, or Piedmont, uh, and they have a different flag here, right? In addition to the flag, there is also a uh, emblem or a gold coin with a letter in, and this is the quality marker of the unit. The worst unit is a conscript unit, that that's the lowest quality, and it's followed by a poor line unit, um, and then a line unit. After that, it's the elite. Uh, it's actually the veterans. After that, it's the veterans, and then it's the elite units, which are the best units. So you also will see there's a number here, and this tells us in what campaign this unit or these units are to be used. So you can see 1796 on these three units here. Well, this one is from 1813, so it cannot be used until we get to that campaign. And in 1813, these guys are not present, so. Every campaign, every map comes with a set of units, both for the enemy and for France. So this is also the reason why there are so extremely many units in the game. There is a name, which is the commander. Um, and while the recruit unit do not have a year number here, so you can have this unit in any, uh, any campaign. And it's a generic unit, so you get to recruit it during the campaign. Uh, from the picture, we can see that there are on the board here. There are three three infantry units and one cavalry, and there are two other numbers that you also need to discuss. So, so the first number is the black number on top here, which is the activation number. And what you need to do when you want to give this unit an order, you need to roll a d10, and you need to score this number or lower in order to successfully activate that unit. So you can see that the poor unit here, the poor conscript recruit, has only a 20% chance of activating, while if the more advanced or the better unit, better trained unit, 
have a higher possibility of being activated. This uh, elite unit will always activate. So I guess it somewhat reflects the commander and the infrastructures of the unit in order to take orders and to effectuate those orders. And these orders can of course be attack, and that is the second number, the white number here. And again, you need to roll the d10. And if you score lower or equal to this number, you have inflicted a hit on your opponent. There is no defense roll for the opponent. So this superscripted number is um, similar to what we saw in Rommel, a super attack value. This unit will, uh, will hit on an 8 or less, but on a 4 or less it will score 2 hits. So when the unit receives a hit, you have to flip it, and it has some reduced numbers. Exception is cavalries, because when you flip cavalry, they don't have any numbers, so that means that they are actually gone. They can only take one hit, and they are out of here. The game also refers to something called combat value, and the combat value of the troop is the white number here. As we go along, you will see why it is important. Well, right now, actually, we need to figure out what we want to do here in Turin. I've decided that I will attack Turin. The combat value of the forces in Turin are 9, and if I'm able to attack with uh, a set of units that have a combat value three times that of the defenders or the opponent that will cause the opponent to cave in and just give up without firing a single shot so that's neat I want to take advantage of that and 9 times 3 is 27 so I need to have more than 27 in order to pass what is called an envelope check Let's just put them out here and have a look. Yeah, they have quite high combat value, all my units. So they are few but good quality. So if I split my forces, and mind you, that may not be a good idea. Napoleon all, almost lost because he split his forces in. And it was actually in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. I cannot allow the Piedmont forces in Savona to come into Nice and just taking that territory from me. So I'm going to take these units and send them into Turin for my move action. So why do I send more than needed? Well, there is a slight possibility that my, or that my information about the defenses in Turin are inaccurate. So if they are, they may get another unit on the battlefield when you are about to do battle and I still want to be able to pass the envelope check. Yeah, even if they get a very weak unit now, that will give them at least two or three battle points more. 9, 10, 11, that's 36. And only have 30. I should probably bring on another unit. I should take this one as well just to be on the safe side. So why not do it like this, taking my best units. Let me bring Napoleon with me. Let me bring him with me to Turin. Yeah, okay. I'm not moving these units. I could do a strike here in Savona, but they are just too many for me. I'm not comfortable with attacking them. If I lose this battle in Savona with these units here, their road is open for them to march into Nice, and, and basically the game is over already. So I'm not doing that, I'm being a little bit cautious. Yeah, I'm finished with my moves, and then we need to resolve the battles. And I'm marking, um, marking the battle uh, place with, this, with these sabers, crossed sabers, and we are ready to introduce the battlefield. So let's take these units and bring on the battlefield. Okay, so this is the battlefield where we will be fighting our battles. I also have this sheet which, which will um, help me resolving those battles or the uh, order of, well, the sequence of the battle turn basically. So it says down here what we need to do. First we need to roll for fog of war and this is the, the point where the 
information may be inaccurate. I like to think of it, think of it like that because I need to roll a die and apply modifications to the roll and then we will consult the chart to see what is going to happen. Now, um, if the enemy have seven supplies or more, they will add four to the roll and they do have eight supplies. So they will add four to the roll and subtract four supplies. So let's have a look at see what the roll is going to be and I want a low number here. I get a five and a four, that is nine. If I had scouts, I don't have scouts, but if I had scouts, I could have spent the scout to do a reroll. A score of nine tells us first that the battle will last for only three turns. So we mark it with the battle turn here. Then it tells us that we need to inflict one hit on your forces in a random French occupied city. Oh man, that's not good. Because we only have one occupied city, Nice. One of our forces there is going to take a hit. Yeah, okay, I'm just putting it down, putting the units in Nice. Down here. If Kilmain is taking the hit, he is eliminated because he's a cavalry. So that is going to be disastrous if that happens. There are six units and I have a d10, so I'm rolling until I get a number between one and six. Should have a d6 here, but I don't. Oh. Well, that's a 10, so I disregard that. And that's a 9. Oh, come on. Another 9. Can you believe it? Another 9. That's 3 in a row. That's a 1. So the fortification here will take a hit. I will flip it, and now it has only a 2 uh, attack strength. So it's going to be very difficult to hit with this cannon. And it will stay in this flip side on the battle board, so I remember it. Now the next is the uh, before mentioned envelope check. So now I check if I have three times the battle value as the defenders, and I do. I have more than that. You already calculated that. So that means that the defenders are just giving up. So they go away. And I have won the battle before it has even begun. So the units are back. Here now in Turin, I have occupied Turin, and that went well for the cost of one hit on a cannon in this, I secure Turin. Oh, I need to subtract four from the supplies for from the enemy. That will give them four supplies left. The next is, is the forced march step. And in this step, I can force march my units at the cost of one supply per unit. I can do that even if they have moved already. And I can always force march, march uh, Napoleon. Mm, I think they're good. I think I would keep Napoleon with the strong forces because if I lose Napoleon, I lose the campaign. Uh, and I only have three supplies, so I'm not going to force march anything. And now I do the uh, French resupply step. That's quite simple. I get three supply points plus three supply points for every French held city. And I hold two cities. That should be 9 supply points in total, and I have 3 already, so that is 12. I'm spending 6 supply points to get this cannon, and I'm adding the cannon to Napoleon's forces here in Turin. And I'm using 2 more supply points to upgrade or to re re refresh my fortifications. In this, that's 8, and I have 3 more. Mm, no, I'm not doing that. I am so I'm buying this five cannon instead. Not the sixth one, but the five one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I have five more points, and I'm getting this fortification and placing it in Turin, because when I move out of Turin, I need to have something that can uh, that will help me uh, keep Turin uh, as uh, as a French city. How many was that? Let's see, 5, 9, that's 11. I have only one supply point left. One supply point left for me. And that was my first turn. I don't know, that went pretty well, I think, for the first turn. Well, I wasn't too ambitious, so probably a little bit uh, uh, underwhelming ambitious. So let's see what the enemy will answer with. They will now do their orders. 